story teller dear viewers in this series we present short stories in simple english you can hear the stories while you may read them on the screen the writer's name is at the end of each story please click on like share and subscribe if you find the contents to your liking we look forward to your valuable comments and here we go with one recognition as a painter jishuda must have earned a limited acclamation because in spite of his proficiency he was against any publicity and had never organized any exhibition anywhere to present his works for public viewing though he mentioned painting as his occupation only when he was subjected to insistent query few people could claim to have witnessed his creation but he could never be called a reclusive person by the way he talked to people on endless topics whenever he talked one had to appreciate his depth of understanding and ability to explain things but as soon as the discussion turned to his personal affairs he started withdrawing himself to evade the issue thus he seemed to be rather an enigmatic personality in spite of our knowing him for many years he seemed to be an unknown and a distant entity so our curiosity about the man remained forever it was not that we could see him often once or twice a year he paid a visit like a comet but of course his orbit was undefined but every visit which used to be for around a couple of hours or so would remain etched with some memorable features as school students we always look for some excuse to seek the spite from the daily drudgery of compulsive work out and visits of jishuda provided us with an excellent rest even when he talked to the elders we clung to him because all his talks were spiced with humorous anecdotes which brought pills of laughter in the room even our father who possessed a grave personality normally associated with the fatherly figures of the pagan ages would be seen relishing the talks and would sometimes chip in with witty comments to our great surprise Jishuda was not related to us, and we saw him with Benuda, who was our distant cousin. We were still in the lower classes of middle school, and Benuda had joined as an office goer. When one day Benuda turned up with Jishuda, whom he introduced as his friend, Jishuda looked a little senior to him. Benuda used to call him Jishuda, and we also did the same. On the first day itself, we took a liking towards the person who was gifted with two beautiful eyes, which were always smiling. The affectionate way of his addressing us instantly drew us towards him. Though our father took a little time to accept him in a closer range, mother became affectionate towards the seemingly carefree young man. But it took her to put in the womanly skills to make the man reveal. that there was none in his family and he was a winged bird to fly anywhere at his own free will though benuda claimed to be his friend he seemed to know very little about him we were more interested in his talks and hardly cared for his personal details once being pressed by mother he made our father sit in the chair for about 20 minutes as desired by him he had been given a pencil and half used old drawing exercise copy in these few minutes he drew a portrait of father the stunningly beautiful piece made us dumbstruck we were surely not capable of right judgment but the piece looked no inferior to the ones that we came across elsewhere as the works of the great artists father seemed to be a living one in the portrait that made us the siblings cajole the artist into making a similar one for our dear mother in spite of her initial refusal our demand was fulfilled 
and we simply looked in awe both at the Creator and the creation. The two portraits remained in my possession ever after. I could never forget the scene while the silent artist was at his work and as desired a sort of pin drop silence prevailed in the room at that time except a few exclamations slipping out unknowingly from some of us. The silent veneration that father displayed towards the artist spoke of his worth and we wondered what kept him from exhibiting his creations among the public. Benuda too looked puzzled with his limited knowledge about the activities of the man of quality. Kishuda's stories often involved archaeological findings, particularly in India. He seemed to possess a pride of being born in the land which had a great past in diverse fields. He often said, till now very little of our past has been unveiled. In future, astonishing features of our glorious past will be discovered. Even now, can you find any other country having as much diversity as of ours? But what we lack is spread of education. While speaking of the poor life of a cultivator in our country, one day he said, Do you know about the life in Kashmir? The land that boasts as heaven on this earth, witnesses the misery of the poor farmers toiling hard to sustain their life like elsewhere in the country. He told us the story of Muhammad Ismail, a poor farmer who owned a plot of land and cultivated paddy on his own. It was not very far from Srinagar, the capital city, but like most of the villagers there, he lived in poverty. The sunburnt skin spoke of the effort that the members of each family put in their farms. Jishuda had to put up in the heart of Ismail for a few days when he could come to know about the closely. Ismail was quite liberal in his attitude, though he was a devout Muslim in his belief and performed the Salat and other rites as his religion demanded. He was open-hearted towards people of other religions. Seeing Jishuda in need of a shelter, he voluntarily offered him to stay in his heart as long as he wished. But Jishuda was shocked to see his eldest son, who was in his late twenties. The young man tried to do a lot of work with his legs and toes because he had no arms. But he was a very strong man and once had strong arms too. He had got employment as a guard in a wealthy household, and during a raid by a gang of decoys, the brave men tried to save the landlord when the furious raiders chopped off both his hands. After a month in a hospital, he came back home to stay in bed for some more time, but with no possibility of a future employment anywhere else. The meager compensation offered by the wealthy landlord could hardly be of much help. The depiction of the pathetic plight of the young man touched our heart. Yeshuda felt the necessity to change the topic and say, Benu, why do people go to Kashmir? Benuda hesitated and then said, why? It's to enjoy the natural beauty, of course. There you are. Most people think so, because Kashmir has kept hidden its treasure trove since long. Of course, things have started changing of late, and because of inquisitive researchers, it is gradually opening up. I am talking of art. Because of barbarian marauders, many ancient creations had been destroyed, but whatever had survived are cautiously being preserved from the revises, mostly in the Buddhist monasteries. You ask anyone about the ancient culture or paintings in India? The average the reply will contain famous works of Ajanta, Ilora, Kajuraho and Kanar. I have seen few people having any idea about Kashmir. Most people are ignorant about the Buddhist sculptures in Afghanistan and in the northwestern region. But surely in the coming days more efforts will be made to open up the hidden treasures with due caution. I was in the seventh class when I heard of Bhimbetka cave paintings. Of course, the source was Jishuda. 
we were astonished to learn that some of the cave paintings were 30,000 years old. That meant that those had been made in the Stone Ages. Having read about the Egyptian civilization and also the Mahanjadharo and Harappa in our history textbooks as examples of ancient civilization, I did not feel it easy to believe what I heard that day. But it was surely not a history class at home that day. Jishuda told us the story of a traveller, an archaeologist named Dr. Wanka, who came upon the paintings in the caves in Madhya Pradesh. The story was so engrossing that father also heard with rapt attention. His expression was of great admiration as he said, Thank you, Jishu. I have read bits and pieces about Bhimbitka paintings, but didn't know much. Probably in the early 60s, the professor came across the creations. In the late 50s, about 30 years ago, was Jishuda's rejoinder. He told us about the difficulty in reaching the Bhimbitka cave site, which was spread over a large area in a difficult terrain. There was no direct route, no vehicles were available, and one had to walk on the uneven terrains where footfalls were very less. In course of our talks that day, Kashmir came up because Jishuda had just paid a visit there again, but he noted a sad expression in Jishuda's words. Probably dark days are ahead for Kashmir. I am doubtful if I will be able to freely travel there anymore. We learned that a mass resentment was spreading among the populace with the political and logistical support of our neighboring country against the Indian government. The discord between the two nations on the issue of Kashmir was not new, but it was going to take a different shape. Later we found how true Jeshuda was, but that was only in future at that time. About a year later we saw Jishuda again. That day he told us about the life of the poor people in Purulia in Bengal. We were shocked to hear that many families went without food for days together. He spoke of an ill-fed man he had met there. By looking at the man he had thought him to be above 50 years, but was surprised to learn that the man was only 27. Though he spoke of the festivals and activities of the people in the district, Jishuda looked a little somber and we felt he was somehow not his usual self that day. That was Jishuda's last visit to our house. Benuda occasionally came, but he seemed to know nothing about Jishuda. Whenever asked, he would say, how can I know? If he comes again, I'll surely bring him here. Years passed. We got out of school and eventually I went for a career in engineering. Benuda was now a full-fledged family man. In course of our discussion, Jishuda's name found occasional mention. The events in JNK and subsequent Kargil conflict reminded us about the apprehensions that the man of art had once spoken of. My job with the Indian Railways brought me to Asanso where I got a living space for me on rent. One day I got a call on phone. It was Benuda who wanted to know if I could make the next weekend free for him so that he would come to my place for a day. I told him to come on Saturday after 12 noon as a short visit to my office would be necessary that day. I saw Benuda after a couple of years. He looked older than he should have been. Oh, it's all right for a family man. You too will realize it in time, he said in a mocking tone. But then he seemed to be in a hurry, as he said. Can we move out at the earliest? How about your lunch? But where to? I was a little surprised. Purulia, said he. We can have a train or bus or anything available. In fact, I want to return tonight, if possible. That we will see. You can return tomorrow also. But first, let me know the purpose of all these. Now sit peacefully. I pulled Venuda to the only chair in my bachelor's den 
while I sat on the bed. Jishuda is ill. He is there in an orphanage in a place called Shalti near Jalda. Last Monday, I got a letter from one Prabhat Kumar requesting me to visit the place. I don't know the details. For years, I have no contact with Jishuda, but I have never been to Purulia before, so I thought of contacting you. Menuda spoke in one breath and stopped. Jalda I knew, but Shanti I had never heard of. Menuda, has he given a phone number? Menuda shook his head. No details. Even if we start now, we are not likely to be back before midnight. Let's go to Purulia by train. From there, we'll have a cab, I say. Shalti, we found, was a village on the way to Jhalda, but a little away from the main road. When we reached Shishukallan, it was almost four in the afternoon. Our long journey, I heard from Benga what he had never divulged to us before. Jishuda had been three years senior to Benga in his college. Somehow they came closer and a rapport built up between them. Jishuda had been a remarkable scholar and throughout his student life he had to depend on his stipend money. He had lost his parents during childhood and the wife of his maternal uncle drove him away from their house, the only shelter he had known. A graceful religious Swamiji picked him up and gave him shelter in his hermitage near Panihati, about 15 km from Kolkata. It was Calcutta then. He grew up in a philanthropic setup, and his talent in academics and painting earned him reputation. When he entered the university, the old Swamiji suddenly passed away, and a dispute broke out among his followers, leading to disbanding of the setup. Jishuda was compelled to move to a mess in Kolkata. With his stipend money and earnings from private tuitions, he continued his master's course in history and eventually came out with a first class degree. He had dreamt of going higher in academics before embarking upon a prestigious appointment, but a disastrous development broke him into pieces. During his university days, he had come in close contact with a girl from a rich family and in spite of all his training in his formative years, maintaining celibacy, he fell in deep love with the girl, who also seemed to be completely devoted to him. When he was busy in his arrangement of finalizing his entry into a PhD course, he was informed by a close source that the girl was getting married elsewhere according to her own wish. It was nothing short of a story often shown on a movie screen, but here, in reality, the man who had a really tender heart could not sustain the shock and was totally shattered. He made a feeble attempt to contact the girl only to be greeted with contemptuous utterings and abuses by the family members of the girl. All his greed and dedication gave way and a sense of uselessness drove him to move about aimlessly. The only man, the Swamiji, who probably could have lifted him from his desultoriness to put him on the right track, was unfortunately no more, and he detested the idea of meeting anyone for a solace. But bitterness towards city life full of affectations gripped him, and clearing up all his dues, he left the mess with his meager savings to set out for Purulia, where he had been earlier also with the Swamiji on philanthropic mission. Benuda had known very little of these developments during his college days. One day after many years when Benuda was already in an office, he came across his old friend in Kolkata. Apart from beads and pieces, the man never revealed about his activities and had strictly forbidden Benuda to talk to others on these. So he could tell us nothing about Jishuda. Prabhat Kumar greeted us near the entrance and we took seat on a bench on the balcony as suggested by him. He was a young man in his late twenties. 
before you meet him you need to know a few things i don't know if you had been here earlier or how much you know about him prabhat waited for a reply venuda said i have never known he was here though he is my old friend i hardly know about his activities in details and had no information for at least last 10 or 12 years prabhat nodded in understanding he has always been secretive about himself of late we gathered some information from his train notices and there we found your name and address let me tell you first overwork and lack of food had made him fragile and now as very much disease as crippled him completely medicines are being given but god only knows how long prabhat left unfinished with a sigh then prabhat gave us a brief account and we could know that many years ago jishuda had joined a private school in jalda as a teacher and tried with all his might to build up an orphanage for the shelterless children he moved to this remote area for a cheaper plot of land and with hard labor set up mud wall rooms with thatched roofs while he kept only boys here he had handed over the girls who came across to an institution in jalda the boys were in due course admitted to jalda primary school and also had training here in gardening painting etc since most of the children had no knowledge about their parents it was made customary that everyone would have his surname kumar guruji as they called jishuda struggled hard to feed the boys and let them have education along with character building lala ji an elderly gentleman of this locality assisted him to some extent but guruji never entertained others to meddle into his affairs a few years ago that old gentleman had passed away and guruji was left all alone but by now some of the boys had grown up and a few decided to stay on as long as possible to help the set up prabhat kumar was the senior most of all the inmates and he had decided to carry on the responsibility he had graduated from purulia and was now working as a teacher in the middle school in jalda since stray helps came from some private donors it had become necessary to set up a proper trustee board and for that they needed to know about guruji's familial details and any claimants etc but had no clue he took the initiative to go through all the documents available and finding benuda's reference he took a chance we were eager to meet the long lost wise entertainer and prabhat took us in on a single bed on one side of the small room lay a skinny figure as if a skeleton had a covering of a human skin a vacant look in the eyes bore no expression guruji look at and see who have come prabhat said with a bow to the figure no movement no response and after a while a feeble croaking could be heard from the throat i did not know about benuda but i felt a wrenching pain tearing my heart with tears swelling in my eyes i moved out of the room those beautiful eyes those entertaining depictions those portraits i sat down on the bench benuda probably tried to speak one or two words but to whom oh my god exclaimed benuda as he came out followed by prabhat The young man needed some feedback from us about Guruji's activities. I remember sometimes for one or two weeks he disappeared, giving the responsibility to Lala Ji. But that was years ago. On returning back, he would draw landscapes and figures, but always avoided publicity. We were trying to preserve whatever we have of those now. Did he hold any show of paintings anywhere? Menuda shook his head. Never, as far as I know. Prabhat took us around, 
we saw children of different ages. Some were busy while the younger ones were playing merrily. Total number at present was 52. We saw a few grown up boys engaged in different activities. There were asbestos roof barracks beside a concrete roof building. In a covered corridor, a good many number of paintings in handmade bamboo frames were hanging on the walls. The fascinating beauty of the creations made us speechless. We don't have means for proper framing with glass cover, so Prabhat sought to explain the deficiency in maintaining the precious works of art. It was getting dark. We needed to get back. I shall come again at the earliest. Let me talk to some people in Kolkata, Beruda said to Prabhat even as he looked thoughtful while getting into the cab. The first thing we needed to do was to make an arrangement for a proper treatment for Jishuda, preferably in Kolkata. Other things would follow in due course. Being a job holder now, I felt I must take a strong initiative and at the earliest. The next morning, Benuda started back for Kolkata. He would talk to doctors there. I phoned up our medical officer. He suggested shifting the patient to Kolkata immediately. On Monday, I applied for leave for the whole of the following week. I phoned up Benuda and fixed up the next Saturday for shifting. But the ever elusive Jishuda did not wait till the next weekend. Did he smile at us as he spread his wings to soar away beyond our reach? Thank you for watching.